Hey guys, it's me, AD Summer for 4 So today, guys, I'll talk to you guys about the UEFA Conference League games. So today, I'll be giving you guys my predictions for all four of the matchups. So remember, guys, to leave your predictions in the comment section below. And if you're new on here, consider that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as we try to continue to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that subscribe button. Anyways, time for the predictions. So let's start with the first matchup here, which we have here is Gant versus West Ham. Now, in my opinion, this is a great matchup. In my opinion, I think this might be the matchup of the round. And this could possibly be the most hot, most goals, right? Because I look at Gint this season, right? Last season, they made it all the way to the uh, round of 16, and they lost to Pauk. So this is actually a much better. So Gint have improved. And I look at this Gint team and that this season, they've been flying domestically. You know, they've been good domestically speaking. And I just think that for Gint in particular, this has been an incredible achievement for them to be in this kind of position to be in the quarterfinals and to potentially make the semifinals because obviously the favorites are um, obviously West Ham. Of course, West Ham, with the pedigree they have in the EPL, of course you would expect them to be the heavy favorites. But you can never write off against this um, team and especially the fact that uh, West Ham this season have been really poor. Like, this has probably been one of the worst West Ham teams I've seen in a while. They're battling relegation as well. It's, it's going to be a huge It's going to be a huge task for a, um, get Obviously, some crucial players are going to need to step up and get Orban, scored a hat-trick in the last round against Islam Babashek here and around in a span of three minutes. Obviously, he's one to look out for. Then Hosek Hong is also there. Jens Peter Hoj. I think you have Piyato Kuski and Tessa Dili. My issue with this um, Gen team is that I just don't feel they have the quality compared to West Ham, and I do think defensively at times they're a bit suspect. West Ham, the same could be kind of said too for them, is that defensively they haven't been great this season. You know, attacking-wise, they got some amazing players. Obviously, Perquieta comes to mind. They got Mikel Antonio that comes to mind. And I just think for this West Ham team, it's going to be very interesting. Now, remember, guys, in the in the um, every stage, there usually is an upset. And for this one, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this one um, folds out. Because I believe the first leg is going to actually take place in... Um, where is the first leg going to take place? I believe, yeah, the first leg is going to take place in Gain Stadium. And the second leg is going to be away. That's going to be very, very interesting for Ghent. In my personal opinion, I am going to actually go with Ghent to advance. Um, I know it's a crazy call, and I know many of you guys may be slandering me in the comment section below, but I do have a feeling there's going to be an upset. And and I just feel as though that West Ham, while they should win this, and they are the heavy favorites, I think they may prioritize the uh, Premier League more and try to avoid relegation and that kind of thing. So... We'll see, though. Like, I wouldn't be surprised West Ham do it. But I just have a feeling we're going to see an upset in this round. And I have a feeling this is going to be it. Who knows, though? I could be very wrong, though. I could be very wrong. Next up, it is um, Basel versus Nice. Wow, what a matchup. What a matchup. I have to say, guys, I've not been impressed with Basel. I have not been impressed with this Basel team. This Basel team have been very, very mediocre. And I know it's kind of harsh for me to say this because they are in the quarterfinals. But we have to put things in perspective here, right? They just about managed to get the better of, uh, what is it called? Travenspor, I believe, in the round of 32. And then they managed just to squeeze, narrowly squeeze their way through Slovian Batisivle. And Slovian Batisivle were 2 0 up against them. They had to take it to penalties. This Nice team have been amazing. This Nice team have been on fire. I've been really enjoying what this Nice team has done. I think they have some quality players. I really like. Um, that um and you know Pepe is doing great and then obviously they have some other good players and I just think that this Nice team they they they, they want to make a statement here you know being the last team left in European competitions from France they're gonna want to make a statement here and I feel like they have some good players obviously Tadebo as well John Clear Tadebo former Barcelona player uh, obviously it's gonna be interesting to see out there then you got Casper Schmeichel Aaron Ramsey then you got Pepe of course Mofi as well Dante as well this team is littered with talent you know. And with this Basel team, man, there's not really many standout players other than the fact they got Hits, who's a decent goalkeeper, of course. And then you got um, that striker. I believe that. who's I think it's uh, um, Zakaria, I think. Yeah, Zakaria, I think, plays for them as well. So I just feel like, that for me, this Basel team haven't really been that great. Uh, they've been, in my opinion, kind of just, just about scraping through, um, getting to the uh, finish line. But who knows, like I said, guys, um, with all the pressure on Nice, and, you know, French teams do tend to underperform in Europe. There is a possibility that Basel could get the job done. Um, that being said, though, I would still fancy Nice significantly. So I, I am going to go Nice to advance, and Nice have the second leg at home. So you think all you think it would all pan out to Nice to advance. So I'm going to go Nice to advance on this one, guys. 
Next up, it is um, um, Andrew Luck versus AZ Alkamar. Wow, this is an amazing one. This is incredible, guys. Andrew Luck to do what they did here to knock Villarreal out of the competition. One of the favorites for the competition is an incredible, incredible achievement. This is spectacular achievement. And for Anderlecht in particular, they're, they're, they're going to be the underdogs in this one, you know. And I just think it's going to be interesting to see how Anderlecht approach this one. Like, are they going to approach this one how they did against Avila Real in that kind of same fashion as well, you know. And I just think that for me, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here because they've been struggling domestically speaking. Domestically, they haven't been great this season. So they are going to definitely put a lot more um, emphasis on this competition, I believe. And you have the likes of John Vertong in there, Andres Dreyer, then you got... Duari, then you have Islam Slameni, who scored the winning goal, I believe, against Avila Real. And the A's Alcamar, man, what is there to say? This team is so underrated, one of the most underrated teams, in my opinion, in Netherlands, and they have some quality players. Pavadalis, that striker, is amazing. And I like, I, I think this AZ team has been playing really well, guys. I really think this AZ team is um, on fire, and I really like what they've been doing. You know, you have to give credit, they also ousted um, Lazio. You know, we could have had a Avila Real Lazio, guys, <laughs> in the quarterfinals. Uh, but instead, both of them got knocked out, which is really interesting. And obviously, you know, Matthew Ryan there, and Pavita Lees, and you have Carlson as well. And yeah, I just think that for me, guys, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Now, the fixtures, um, the first leg is actually going to take place in, um, in Belgium, and the second leg will take place in Netherlands. So, you would fancy, um, you would probably fancy AZ Alkmaar with the home advantage of the second leg. That could be very, very massive, but it was, as we all know, guys, home advantage may not mean much. So, for me personally, guys, I'm gonna go with AZ Alkmaar to advance. I just think for me, they just their team is just well stacked at the moment, and I just think that this team is just looking so good. And yeah, I think this AZ team is gonna do it, guys. I think this AZ team is gonna do it. So yeah. And then the final quarterfinal game we have here, guys, is Lech Bazan versus Fiorentina, guys. Wow. For me, guys, uh, Lech Bazan, I just think that for me, this has been incredible. This is the first time a Polish team has reached the quarterfinals of a European competition for the first time in their history, which is incredible. And what they did to get here has been incredible, too. They eliminated Bodo Glimt in the round of 32, and they also eliminated Dirk Gadon in the round of 16. So this has been an incredible achievement for Lech Bazan. And I just think that for Lech Bazan in particular, this is just amazing, spectacular achievement. We have to give them a round of applause for the kind of effort they put into this thing. And as for Fiorentina, they also had a difficult route. They came through second in the group, had a very difficult matchup around us, 32 against Braga, one of the, probably the toughest teams you could have drawn against, and they made light work of it. They destroyed Braga, smashed them. And then the round of 16, um, they got through, um, um, I believe, Sivispor? Yeah, Sivispor they got through. So this Fiorentina team have been amazing. This is a, a great, this is a kind of a matchup of the over-rising teams, you can say, because both teams haven't really been that, both teams weren't even expected to reach this far in some regard. And I just think that for me, um, it's been incredible. You know, Fiorentina, they haven't been doing well domestically, but they've put in everything in this competition, which is incredible. You have the likes of, obviously, um, Luka Jovic, who's been amazing, Amrabat as well. Then you also have some other notable players that have been amazing. And for this Lech Pazan team, they, like I said, they've just been amazing to watch. And um, I just really like how fun this team is to play, you know, watch. You know, like I said, they have some good players, obviously, and we'll stand out now is Mikhail Izjek, who's pretty good. You got Georgia Tisivi, uh, Georgian, of course, and Mikhail Skoros. The thing with this team is that they don't have really have a lot of standout players, but they play well as a unit. And that's the thing I like about this team. So, for me, my prediction for this one, guys, I think is going to be Fiorentina. I just think Fiorentina, man, they're just going all in for this competition. And um, I think they just, want, they just have a point to prove, you know. And they actually have played before in the past. Fiorentina actually got the better... They've got one win, and Lech Bazan got one win. So, both of which came in the Europa League Group Stage I games, of course, respectively. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in this one, guys. But, yeah, I'm going to say right now that um, um, Fiorentini advance. Fiorentini advance here. So, I want to know what you guys think of your predictions. Comment section below um, of your uh, thing. And so, yeah, let me let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, guys. If you made it this far, please consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment down below your thoughts. Comment section below. And yeah, make sure you guys consider becoming a member of the channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.